Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, Toto. Nice to see you. Let me know where you are uh, coming from. Toto's in Jakarta. I'm uh, in Nontabury. My name is Dale Spafford or Derek Spafford. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. I'm the Asia Regional Professional Development Manager for Macmillan Education. Uh, as I said, I'm based here in Nontabury in Thailand, and I'm your host for the third of our webinars. I'm oh, sorry, for the second of our webinars. Uh, the third will actually be an ELT time, I'll tell you about in a moment. So we had a webinar on Monday. Uh, sorry, on oh, I need to I need to restart myself. I've just restarted my computer and it sent me uh, in a tizzy. We had a webinar last week, and this is the second follow-up webinar, which is all about AI advancements uh, and hopefully building understanding when it comes to AI and what's out there for you as teachers. So if you want to hear more about our events, then please don't forget to follow us on our Facebook or our WeChat, um, where you can find up-to-date information uh, about everything that we have going on, including any new products that we have available that you might find interesting and useful for your teaching. As always, you will receive a certificate. This comes with a thank you email, which also includes the recording of today's session. If you want to share it or watch it again, please be patient and check your spam folders because it might be there if you feel like you haven't received it yet. Welcome to Changemakers. This year, we have a wonderful new in initiative, which is about making children responsible and for their um, for their learning, as well as sh showcasing their learning with others across the world. So we have a, a global hub, a website, where we're encouraging people to send their work that they do in their class related to sustainability, diversity, equity, inclusion, and also global citizenship. We want students to be able to uh, share what they're doing in the classroom and inspire others. As I said, it's designed for, to help teachers share their knowledge, develop their skills, and promote attitudes and actions that can bring about positive and lasting change. And if you want to get no more, then please go to our website, changemakersworld.live, scan the QR code, and here you'll get to see examples of what students are doing uh, across the world. And hopefully this will uh, motivate you and your learners to do a similar thing and showcase your talents and your students' talents. Next Tuesday, we have a very special session. This is the third session in the Autumn Webinars Trilogy. We have Mr. Huoc from Vietnam. He is an expert in AI, has wrote the book, The Art of Science and Chat GTP in Education. He's gonna join me where we're gonna have a discussion around AI in education. I'm gonna pick his brains and find out uh, what, uh, lots more about how we can use AI to enhance our teaching. Please come and join us on Tuesday the 19th, scan the QR code and register. Today, we have a fantastic session. As I said, it's all about enriching understanding with AI advancements. We've got Super and we've got Blue with us today. Blue is joining us all the way from Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. And Super is joining us from Shanghai in China. Hello, Blue, how are you? Good afternoon, Dal. I'm all right, thank you, sir. Good man, and Super, how are things going with you? Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Are you asking me or Blue, sorry? I was asking you, Super, how are things going with you? Yeah, it's great. I've been immersed in the world of AI for the last two weeks, and it's been amazing, yeah. It really is eye-opening, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a really, uh, it's, a, it's a great, great, um, a great thing to research. So we'll, well, I think we're going to look at um, some, some advancements in today's session, as I said. I think, Blue, you're going to look at some implications possibly and limitations, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, I'm an advocate of AI, much like yourself, Dale, and that's why we're here today, everybody. But 
there is a point to use it. There is a element of do's and don'ts, I guess, in the classroom when it comes to students. So I'll be looking at sort of the limitations and downfalls of AI as well. All right. Well, that sounds interesting. And I think it's really healthy to have, um, you know, a, a different side, a different a way of looking. at. I think most of the most of what I've seen so far has been all super positive and all wonderful and and uh, how fantastic it all is. But, yeah, it'd be interesting to to have that uh, side of things as well. So I'm going to start by just recapping a little bit on what we talked about on Wednesday. One of the things that I mentioned on Wednesday was this quote here. So I believe um, that AI will not replace teachers. Those teachers who use AI, though, will replace those who don't. And I'm going to ask you in a poll to see if you agree with me or disagree with me. So there should be a poll on the screen. Can you just confirm you can see the poll? Yes. I okay. So, okay, some votes are coming in now. So we've got some agrees, agrees and neutrals. Um, no disagrees at the moment. Blue, you haven't voted yet. Oh, we've got <laughs> a disagree as well. That's good. Lots and lots of agrees, agrees 49% at the moment, 50% at the moment. I'm going to keep it open for until we get, we've got around about 100 people in. So if we get around about 60 people voting, then I will show you the results. Interesting at the moment, most people seem to agree. What about you, Blue? Do you agree or disagree? Again, I, I'm, I said earlier, I'm an advocate of AI, but, and it's it, there's a big asterisk next to that, but I think I need convincing that we utilize it correctly and don't just abuse it. So okay. at the moment, I'm going to sit on the fence down and say neutral. And what about you, Super? Yes, I agree with this quote, like uh, for to, to some extent as well. Uh, however, it's still developing. And I think the, the best way to um, cope with the situation is to get as much as knowledge about it and, and know how to use it and when to use it and also how to find your students are using it as well. So, yeah, a good knowledge about AI is definitely going to be key. Cool. All right. Well, I've shared the results now. You should be able to, the people should be able to see those results. Um, but the majority of you agree and strongly agree. So 74% um, ag either agree or strongly agree, which is, I think, um, likely, isn't it? I, I think you would probably wouldn't be in a webinar talking about AI if you didn't actually advocate for AI yourself. But um, I really um, I really like this quote. So it certainly resonates uh, with me. And I think it takes the fear out of what I was seeing at the start of teachers uh, uh, when they were encountering AI. So just to recap what we did on um, on Wednesday, we looked at some less ways how to uh, use a, a ChatGTP in particular for lesson planning. We talked about differentiation, about creating different texts using AI. And we also looked at how we can use AI really effectively when it comes to uh, translation. And Super, you looked at generating other ideas sort of going deeper into lesson planning, looking at the games that you can generate using AI. And then you were talking about um, some of the um, the ways that we can use it to help with writing as well and the uh, and the tools that we, we've got for helping with uh, grading and stuff like that. And then also actually looking at how it can help with speaking as well, uh, generating model text, model conversations um, and those kind of things. So should we crack on with today's session where we're going to look at advanced AI advancements in particular, you super are going to give you loads and loads of ideas uh, or, or apps and sites that we can go to to find out more about uh, AI and how it can help us with our teaching. So I'll stop talking now and pass it over to you super. Um, and then we're going to have a question from the audience uh, and then we'll pass it on to Blue who will discuss further. And then we're going to have another question from the audience. Uh, and then we'll have a, a wider Q&A. So if you've got any questions that you would like the panel to answer, please pop them into the Q&A tab at the bottom 
uh, and are into the chat. Sometimes it's hard to monitor the chat, so the Q&A function is the best. So without further ado, Super, you may take over. Yes, so let me share my screen first. Everything looking okay? Perfect. Indeed, yeah. Okay. So we talked about a lot of practical ideas of using ChatGPT in the last session, and we gave a lot of like examples in the last session as well. However, ChatGPT is not only like is not the only like AI tool we could use for language teaching. There are different types of AI tools for language teachers to use in the classroom. So today at the beginning, I will quickly give you a list of AI tools that can be powerful and useful for you to explore. And I'm going to, yeah, go through them really quickly. So don't worry about the information. You will receive a list of the information after the session. Uh, so be attentive and be ready to get to know a lot of in information from now on. So the list would be, six different types of AI tools for English language teaching in the classroom. And I will go through them one by one quickly without like uh, diving into details, just give you a quick like a uh, heads up about some things available and you could go and explore and giving you a few examples of tools name as well so that you can do some research on your own. And so without further ado, let's just jump into the first one, TTS, which stands for text to speech tools. Uh, as a language teacher, we deal with texts and speeches every day. So these text to speech tools can be useful to help you to convert texts to speech. If you have some original texts, you would like to turn them into uh, audio content. You can use TTS tools. Uh, some of the tools we have mentioned in the last session already, for example, Natural Reader, Voice Maker, or Resemble.ai. So these uh, tools are good for you to turn these texts into audios uh, for language teaching purposes. For example, you can create dialogues, stories, or news articles and make them into an audio format. So it, it allows a lot of flexibility there for you to choose the content to use in the classroom. And uh, on the contrary, we could also turn speech into texts. So uh, if you want to transcribe audio or video content into written format, it's also possible. So, so there are AI tools called Cock Tattoo or Speech Notes that you can go and explore. So these two examples can help you with uh, transcribing. So if you have a video or audio you would like to make into scripts, or if you have your students' recordings, their speaking practices, you want to transcribe and let them see the, the mistakes, the errors there, you could transcribe them into written format and give them for further uh, like a practice or activities to use. So TTS and STT tools are very, very uh, commonly used AI tools and it can be very easily used as well. So go and have a look at these ones and find try to find some ways to use them and incorporate them into your lesson planning would be a good idea. And moving on to some more advanced AI tools like the chatbots uh, for language practice. So as a language learner, we always uh, struggle with like a uh, language practice. So if there is no one else like uh, there for us to practice the language with, the AI chat box could be a choice. So it can offer interactive language practice opportunities for speaking and for writing as well. And uh, some AI tools can also provide support and immediate feedback as well. So these chat box can be great for language practice in and outside of the class. So ChatGPT could be one of them. Uh, Duolingo is something also available for chat, like for um, chat as well. And after the emergence of like uh, ChatGPT, I think these uh, old AI tools like or Duolingo, some they are trying to incorporate more AI like uh, based or AI oriented uh, chatbots into their original platform. So that could be another choice. And there is another one called Replica, which can be uh, quite like human like. You will find there are human like artificial intelligence like uh, uh, avatars there for you to chat with. 
So this could be something even more uh, like human interactive format. So go and have a check uh, of these chat bots uh, for language practice. And after practicing, probably we will need to think about, okay, we need to evaluate and give feedback on students like speaking, uh, like uh, practice. So some speech evaluation and feedback tools can be also very, very helpful. So for example, uh, we, we can have some like speak, speaking tasks uh, with students and then uh, using these AI tools to give students feedback in terms of their pronunciation and speaking skills. Uh, we can use these AI tools to analyze students' spoken language and provide feedback, even in terms of their accuracy, fluency, and intonation. There are some good ones, for example, the one called Elsa, not the Elsa from Disneyland, but the Elsa for yeah speech speech like uh, uh, evaluation and also speech ace could be another another tool. I tried uh, some of these tools. Uh, they are free of charge right now. Of course, uh, you can try and uh, see what they can do for you. But for some advanced uh, like uh, features and functions, probably uh, the paid version will be more helpful. But still, we could go and explore. Um, they provide really detail oriented like uh, feedback based on my pronunciation and will give you a percentage of accuracy of your pronunciation and give you some feedback and will model good speaking as well. So these can be really, really helpful for speech evaluation and feedback tools, uh, feedback to uh, provide your students uh, good uh, instant like feedback on their speaking. And moving on to more original content creation tools. If teachers, you don't have like a, a good content to um, engage your students, if you want to create some original materials in the audio or video format, or sometimes using like pictures as well, you could uh, take advantage of those AI tools to create some original video and uh, audio content. You could um, input some prompts using text. For example, uh, please create a, a video based on this topic. Uh, please include A, B, C, D, E. And I would like to um, have you include scripts like uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, just giving prompts based on text and it will generate original videos and audios for you. So one example for video is called Synthesia and the one for audio is called Podcastle. So these tools uh, are quite new. They are not perfect. They are not like uh, amazingly like create everything for you. They cannot do everything, of course, but if you would like to uh, convert texts content into uh, audios and videos, they can do the job for you. And it, it's definitely more engaging if you could incorporate different types of content into the classroom. Yeah, I tried uh, these two to find out if they can do really uh, amazing jobs. So far, the, the videos and audios created are quite basic. They're not like uh, very, very impressive, but I think they are still developing. So uh, for future, like um, maybe AI advancement, I think they will do more and more like uh, uh, impressive videos and audios in the coming future. But still worth trying and worth yeah practicing uh, to find out what they can do for you. And also, if videos and audios are not impressive enough, you would like to in incorporate something more fancier, probably virtual reality could be another choice. So not only videos and the audios, virtual reality for immersive language learning AI tools are also available right now. Uh, you could create maybe authentic language pra practice experiences by creating a virtual travel scenario or a stimulated conversation or even some cultural experiences are possible by creating an environment for the students uh, in a virtual reality format. So there are VR chat and Immerse Me, yeah, tools like that, uh, that's available to find out what a, what VR like uh, effects can be created based on your prompts and instructions. Yeah, and lastly, I would like to wrap up to the whole list with the adaptive learning platforms. So the good thing about these platforms are uh, you could provide more of a consistent and systematic learning journey for your student uh, because they have been there for a while. Uh, they can 
be really, really helpful if you would like to incorporate these uh, platforms into your students' personalized learning like a uh, journey. Yeah, instead of using, you, we can use them for independent learning, of course, as an adult, I learn like language on the Duolingo or Rosetta Stone. However, as a language teacher, you want to support your students in a more personalized way, you could incorporate these platforms for uh, different individual students to target to their needs and uh, yeah to give them a personalized learning like a uh, plan for them yeah and then with the ai like uh, development i think these platforms have been adapting and also uh, updating to to feed to the students needs uh, more like uh, in a more personalized way already okay so these are the list that I would like to go through and you all don't worry about the, the information there's lots of information so I will we will send these information in the email after the session as well so find something useful to your context and try them out and do some explorations and researches would be beneficial but before I end with my part I would like to yeah give you a heads up about the limitations there as well so these tools are really, really great. They are amazing. They definitely will provide a lot of good uh, support on your teaching and all your students' learning. However, they're still developing. They're still not like perfect. They cannot do everything. Yeah, we must be critical about the content generated by these AI tools. They could be incorrect. They could be biased. And uh, don't trust everything they generate yeah as a teacher we need to monitor the the content we need to still establish uh the authorities um as as a teacher and also using authorized content from previous for example uh we have like uh, materials from uh course books and we have very long like established authorities don't replace these authorities with ai immediately because they are still not that reliable yeah we we still the core of education is to develop students critical thinking the way of learning so we need we must develop these abilities as a human yeah and not believe everything these ai generated it takes a long process for us to yeah believe in these AIs and choose the, uh, the, the content wisely to use in the classroom should be the starting point. So that's all my part. I think, yeah, uh, it's great to have all these AI tools. It just depends on you and your students what you would like to use. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you very much, Sue. That was really, really great list, really comprehensive, um, some fantastic tools there. Um, and, and like you said, we do need to, um, you know, it still needs our input, it still needs us to, to um, curate the content that the AI may produce. Uh, and also to measure whether, yeah, those particularly chatbots, because I've experienced with chatbots, chatbots before, some good, some not so good. So it's up to us as teachers to, uh, to recognize those and pick out what's going to be useful for us and also point out those areas which it might let us down in. So yeah, so thank you very much for those. Um, we will be um, sending you that list um, of tools at the end of today's session with a recording, et cetera, in the email. So if you didn't quite catch all of them, uh, then don't worry. All right, um, I'm going to now, we're going to do something a little bit different now. Um, before today's session, we asked you, the audience, to provide us with some questions um, that we might answer in today's uh, session. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is invite one of our, um, our regular guests, um, Mr. Guy Ridgen. You may have seen Guy um, contribute to the chat if you're a regular um, attendee of our webinars. Uh, Guy's gonna join us and he's got a question that he would like to ask. Um, and it leads on very nicely to what Blue's going to discuss. So just give me a moment and I will bring Guy to the stage. Give me a second here. Okay, so Guy's just connecting to the audio now. Guy is an instructor and a leader of the editing and translation unit at the language center 
in the academic ac ac academic and faculty affairs department of Dusit Tanik College in Bangkok. And uh, we're really privileged to have Guy with us today. Can you hear us and see us okay, Guy? I can, I can, I can hear you. I don't think you can see me, but I can see all of you. I can't see you though. Is that, it's that, um, is that your end without it the video? It could be, or is it, it could be. Oh, wait, wait, start video. Let me try that. There we go. There we go. Hello, okay, good, good afternoon, everybody from Bangkok. Yes. Good afternoon. We're there really delighted and we really appreciate uh, you joining us today, Guy. As I said, um, just a little bit of history. I've, I've seen your name um, in the chat many times when we've had these webinars over the last few years. And we finally actually got to meet, didn't we, last year at Cam Tissot? That's right. Yes. Yeah. Well, I hope we meet again in Cambodia this year. I hope so, too. Um, if you don't, if you want me, me, you'll definitely meet Blue, hopefully. Um, and we are actually, we, we're, we've been in chats to join our ELT time in December as well, haven't we? So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll have more of a chat then as well. Okay, I, I'm using AI a little bit. I appreciate everything that uh, Super has just said. But in, in the new semester, I'm going to be teaching a, a university level academic writing class. And I'm more concerned with the students using AI and wonder if you can suggest a free plagiarism checking program. There are plenty of plagiarism checkers out there, but some of them are very, very expensive. So if you have some idea that I can check that the students aren't just having AI create their essays, that would be, that would be a great help. I know plagiarism with AI is a concern for many, many people, but uh, is it completely unavoidable or do we have to live with it just a little bit? Great, yeah, so I'll pass that on to Blue because it leads into what Blue's going to be discussing about. And it was a the majority of questions that we had, Guy, uh, from participants were about, uh, were about plagiarism. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to uh, discuss that and come up with some answers for you. Blue, over to you. Yeah, thanks, Dale, and thanks for the question, Guy. Appreciate you joining us this afternoon. Uh, so yeah, it does lead nicely onto my point, which is being cautioned and just being cautious, I guess, when as a teacher, as an educator, you are using or you're allowing your students to make use of AI. So how do you monitor that? So it leads nicely into what Guy just mentioned there about plagiarism, okay? So again, the number one factor these days is accessibility. You know that all of your students will have one of these in their pocket. Well, may maybe not that, but they will most certainly have one of these, okay? Won't they? Um, mobile phone. And, and that's the problem, whether they have a mobile phone or whether they have a tablet in their classroom. And these days, a, a number of students are handed out and given their exclusive tablet to use throughout the school year. So whether it's a mobile phone or tablet, everything's accessible. And what that means is you're gonna get a lot of this, copy in from one another, but more so now lifting resource material from the internet and very much so AI created content. Hence, plagiarism is something we need to look at how we can approach and possibly combat. So again, I've used the word cheating there, but plagiarism is probably a nicer word. Cheating sounds a little bit harsh, but basically lifting material and not referencing where it was sourced from and sort of playing it off as your own. So as Guy mentioned there, are there any online, free to use, reliable online plagiarism detectors? And I did find this one here, guys, okay? This is GPT-0. And it touts itself as the world's number one AI detector. Uh, it was created by a chap from Princeton University in uh, New Jersey in uh, America. And what I decided to do was early last week, um, I had a go with this. So of course, I used everybody's favorite AI bot at the moment, ChatGTP, okay? I hope you can see that now. I'm gonna play a video for you. So what I did, it was very simple. I went to ChatGPT and I said, tell me a story, okay? So there it is. I lifted the story, simple copy and paste job, pasted it into GPT-0, checked it, and it came back with a 94% reading that it's highly likely that what was written was not my work and was lifted from some kind of AI bot. Um, so to answer Guy's question, 
have a look at that one, GPT-0. I think it's quite useful. But, and this leads nicely into my next part, and it's a big but, okay, everybody. You can't be reliable. Just like um, AI, GPT-0 is in itself some kind of AI bot. So this is directly from the creators of GPT-0. They're saying to you, hey, guys, listen up. You can't just solely rely on us as the only way to check plagiarism, okay? Yes, it's 94%. That's a strong reading, of course. But we urge you as an app, as sort of an option, to use other tools for grading assignments as well. And when it says other tools, I would just go directly back to you guys, the teachers, and say, look, before all this AI idea, we already had plagiarism. People copy and pasting off Wikipedia pages. Um, I know when I was studying French, it would be a simple translation job from Google. Okay. And you as educators, you know your students, you know their ability. And you know, regardless of copying and pasting into an AI platform to check plagiarism, you know the ability of your students. And I know you'll be able to look at a student's piece of work and gauge whether it's really theirs or whether they've had little assistance. These days, maybe from AI, but in the past, it was no different from the older brother or sister, from mum or dad. You know the capabilities of your students and whether that is authentically all of theirs or not. So don't just rely on the bot itself. Use your initiative, use your know-how, and use what you've always used. And that goes to chat GPT. So what better way to ask the limitations of AI than to ask AI itself? And this is what I got back. Feel free to have a read from this uh, excerpt from ChatGPT. It cannot replace other essential aspects of language learning, and it will not, okay? You have to combine AI in order to get that well-rounded English proficiency. It's not just the sole use here. It's not just it works for everybody, it works for everything. It simply isn't true. Super alluded, alluded to this point earlier. We use it, but we have to learn how to use it correctly. And that, again, goes back to you guys, the teachers, the educators in the classroom. You have to set clear expectations, okay? So that begins with this. It begins with, can your students utilize AI? Do you allow them to use AI? And if so, to what extent? With that in mind, you yourself have to educate them on how to use these AI platforms effectively. So you avoid ideas of plagiarism, temptations to plagiarize, and simply just copy, pasting, and lifting from the sourced material. And this is a good suggestion. I found this one, and I liked it a lot, so I've included it. Suggest that students share their prompts in their citation. No different to how they would reference a book or a website. If you are going to use AI to help you with your answers, please provide proof and citate what you asked that AI bot. And I think that's really nice and a good way to encourage use of AI, but also to track what your students are asking it. So to the limitations, and there are limitations, that's, that's where I'm coming from today, that's my angle. I would like you guys in the chat very quickly, just to write one thing that you've experienced from using AI, any kind of AI tools or platforms that you've realized that, well, it's limited, it can't do what I wanted it to do. Can you quickly in the chat write a few things? I'd love to see what you've experienced. What have you got for me? I'm going to look in the chat, just a few quick words. I'll give you 30 or 40 seconds before I move forward. Hamed says, coming up with creative or innovative ideas. Yep, I completely agree. Again, even with AI, Hamed, you're going to get those here's what we were told to say to you kind of ideas. The next person's gonna ask the same question and get those same ideas. So it's important that with those ideas, Hamed, you also put your own creative spin on things and how it works in your classroom. With AI, you have to be bespoke. You have to tailor its use to what you want it to do. And AI sometimes doesn't have the ability to do that, so you yourself have to personalize it. And I'm seeing that a number of times from you guys here, personalization, personalization. And that's where I think one of its biggest limits are. It will give you what it's programmed to give you. But in order to tailor it for your classroom, you yourself may have to do that personalization. 
wonderful guys I, I won't have time to read all this but i will take these answers i'll copy and paste at the end of the session and sort of take a good look at what you thought the limitations were valuable content and resource for me there so what i said were, were these things here okay it's a work in progress lack of sufficient data okay zero real real world experience okay it is created by humans it's a bot and it's a bot for a reason it's not human okay so it lacks that sort of real world experience and of course with that experience comes language as well language is a huge part of culture and the world around us it's sort of cultivated by the world we live in and so with that can ai replicate that maybe not maybe it will in the future who knows and also that lack of, lack of common sense or reasoning Again, it's programmed to do what it does. Can it look beyond that like a human would? Can it look at different angles? Can it look at different ideas and reasonings, opinions? Okay. So when it comes to these limitations, as I mentioned, lack of contextual understanding or cultural context. Again, language is sort of organically cultivated by the world around us, often dictated so. And so I did an example here where I use some idiomatic language, okay? So here's an idiom, to hit the hay, which of course means to go to sleep. You're tired, I'm gonna go hit the hay. And so I asked chat GTP, can you explain the meaning of what hit the hay means? Chat GTP, sure, hit the hay means to physically strike a pile of hay. And of course we know that isn't true. So again, just there's one example of where the context is there, but the cultural understanding might be completely lost. So you get literally the meaning of hitting hay, OK, and not that abstract, idiomatic angle that you are actually looking for. And we all know as educators, one thing that really can be a stumbling block for learners is that idiomatic language, whether it be idioms, phrasal verbs, anything like that. So, again, we hope that AI can assist and not lead students down the wrong path. Another limit, limit, uh, limitation is this one. So this is what I'm going to focus on for the next couple of minutes. Passive learning and active learning. So I asked chat GTP. Can you tell me about the solar system? Of course it can. It can tell me lots about the solar system, but it's a very passive way of me getting that information. It's no different really to me just looking on Wikipedia. Okay, there's limited engagement there between myself and the computer. It's a one-way communication. I input, that outputs, but it's me doing all the legwork. And again, there's no really active participation. there. It's a massive limitation at this moment and I know AI is growing, so there is a little bit more participation there, but it's certainly not as organic as what we're going to look at in a moment, which is the active way of learning and gathering this information, where you're going to get users engage. You're going to get some kind of two-way engagement, interaction between students, between teacher and students. Problem solving and critical thinking. Again, this has been alluded to now a few times. Can AI provide that, or does that have to come from another person, a peer in the classroom, or you yourself, the teacher? And again, hopefully, all of this will stem and grow into some feedback and discussion in the classroom. Does AI actively encourage you to do this when you've sourced the information from there, or is it very much just more passive? And again, hopefully, to sort of finish it off, higher engagement and retention and sort of uh, an understanding of the overall context of what you're trying to research and look at will come from being more active in that learning process. So it's a limitation. And by limitation, I'm not saying it can't be used. Of course it can. It's a great way to do that initial research. And then hopefully you can embed that in the classroom into some active learning activities, but exclusively, as a way to gain information and pass information and show that you understand information, you cannot wholly reply, reply, rely on AI. So my final piece of information to you guys, if any of you are in this session right now and thinking, I'm worrying about AI, I hear all of these words about AI and about how students can gain access and I'm not needed in the classroom. I will leave you with this quote that I found really nice and kind of reassuring as well. This is from a fellow educator like you and I, Christina Wyman. And she says, when a child is struggling, parents do not want to speak with language tools driven by AI technology. They want to troubleshoot with human beings. 
who interact with their child on a daily basis. And so I've highlighted it there, guys. Humanity is required to navigate intimate human relationships, and that is something AI will, will ever be able to replace or will it ever be able to replace. So I'd like to leave you with that because I did kind of play devil's advocate there and look at sort of the things that could possibly be potholes uh, when approaching AI. But I don't want any of you in, out there to be wondering about job security or AI taking over in the classroom. It's very much a two-way thing here. Thank you very much, Blue. Thank you for that um, that other side of the argument, if you like, and and for the uh, tool that you uh, that you provided, um, Guy. Did did you find any of that uh, useful? Any in interesting? Anything you'd like to mention? Talk about? Absolutely. I, I will certainly try out the first the first site that uh, that Blue mentioned, but I, I agree with everything you said about the limitations, but. I'm not worried about job security, but they still need a person to talk to. Parents want the person to talk to. Students want the person to talk to. Yeah, there's a question in, in the Q&A box saying, how can you perhaps detect if work has been plagiarized? I would repeat what Blue has said. If the work is of a significantly different standard from what the student has produced in the past, that's probably a good, that's probably a, a good red flag. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and when, when there was a really, um, there was a question in the chat as well, it's directed at you, Blue, but I think you might okay. be able to speak to this guy as well, um, being in an academic situation. Um, do you have an, any pragmatic AI policy for academic students to apply ethically? And that was by Chen Long. Um, so is this something that you, that I know you probably have guidance at the start of the school year, the, the, the academic year, guys is this been included in your in your university it's but very slowly but this semester and next semester more so to again to re repeat what blue said providing they cite where they source the information from that's a good starting point okay i don't mind them using it to source material but i don't want them to use it to write their essay as a whole and then just submit something that yeah. chat gpt has created but right. as, as experienced educators, we should be able to read it and say, hang on, this individual did not write this. <laughs> yes, yeah. So getting to know them. Yeah, All right. Go I, on, also, yeah, go yeah, on. I just want to add a little bit to the uh, like uh, plagiarism detector. Actually, ChatGPT itself has released one tool called AI Classify earlier in July. However, the tool is uh, proved to be not reliable because only 27% of the result uh, can be reliable. Can be reliable. They depend, like uh, they 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 checked. So they did a lot of tests. They trained the model. However, that AI classifier didn't work as perfectly as they expected. So uh, they get rid of it, and they are developing a new uh, version of it. And hopefully, it will come out maybe soon in the future. But I think we cannot rely on these plagiarism checker only as a teacher. Yeah, I think maybe combining combining uh, supervised like assessment and tests together with uh, their work, written work, uh, which they can do after maybe um, their class time. Yeah, combine these together to check their, uh, to assess them in different like angles will help us to, yeah, better give the feedback and assessment on students' written work should mm -hmm. be, yeah, another choice. Great. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you for that. We're going to move now into the Q&A stage. Guy, if you want to stick around and, and, and add your thoughts, we really welcome you to, or if you want to, uh, you know, leave us, it's up to you. We'd really love to have you around because I think you're going to offer, offer a lot. Uh, we're going to invite um, another uh, of our participants into the uh, into the panel now. Uh, let me just facilitate that. We have Mitsuyo Toya, who's coming all the way from Japan. Let me just promote to panelists, um, and let me see if that's happening. Is that okay? She should be arriving now. Yeah, Mitsuo is a professor in the Faculty of Global and Regional Studies at the University of 
Ryukyus. Is that how you say it, Mitsuyo? Yes, Ryukyus, Ryukyus, yes. Ryukyus. That Hi. is Okinawa. Welcome to our, uh, our session. We're delighted to, to have you uh, and Guy here today joining us and having um, been, been participants in several webinars. It's really uh, great to have you involved. So thank you for so much for your time. Thank you. And um, yeah, Mitsuo, Mitsuo has a uh, MA in ESL from the University of Hawaii, uh, has a PhD from Nihon University, uh, and has been teaching at this university since uh, 1997. Um, and your interests are listening and reading ICT related material development, uh, teacher development and motivation. So thank you very much for your time. And you have a question for Blue and Super, I believe. Uh, yes, um, I originally wrote that um, this is the first time that I look at the chat GPT. I haven't even touched on it myself, but the last seminar was just fabulous. And um, so that's going to change our classrooms uh, forever. But I, at this point of time, I'd like to know that uh, what would be the do's and don'ts for the teachers to be aware of? So that's my question. Okay, brilliant, thank you. Well, I'll uh, pass that over to, to Super. Would you like to start us with that? What are the do's and don'ts of using AI, ChatGTP uh, in the classroom? Yes, I would like to share some of my like research recently because uh, from the, the responses from maybe the most prestigious like universities in the world, we can see like uh, how this AI uh, is is going to evol evolving and also how we are going to cope with that. So basically at the beginning of this year in January, a lot of universities like Harvard, they released like announcements saying that we we are not accepting like work created by chat AIs like chat GPT. Uh, it is not like uh, uh, acceptable. However, later this year in July or August, they or released or like uh, announced some some like a uh, uh, announcement about guidelines uh, for using ChatGPT and other generative AIs. They provide a lot of um, like guidelines on how we should protect our confidential data while using AIs. How we should be responsible for using AIs to generate our work uh, in terms of like uh, assignments or even publications. And also we need to still take into consideration of all the policies and academic integrities uh, we used to have in our classroom. We still need to be, yeah, uh, we need, still need to adhere to all these policies. And also we need to be aware of the changes that are going to come, come up. And they also get, get, give students and teachers very good like instructions about how to get started with uh, these AI tools and how you can better use these AI tools uh, in terms of the academic context. And also I looked at uh, publishers like Nature, like we are part of Nature, like Spring and Nature, and Nature is one of the most um, like best journals in the world about academic like publication. So I, I saw Nature has offered like uh, uh, some guide, guidelines and uh, Nature together with other publications, other like, uh, uh, com like members from the community, they're trying to uh, like work on a universal guideline for people to use AIs in their writing and uh, for academic maybe publications. Um, they want to have standard like uh, reporting um, like uh, uh, guidelines on how we should quote and uh, cite, cite these AI generated content. I think it's developing just like um, when we first have internet, yeah, it's, it's something quite like a uh, new, quite explosive, very like uh, a phenomenon. However, uh, it takes a long time for us to develop the accompanying guidelines and accompanying maybe uh, standards for using it in the classroom. So a lot of things I think uh, Blue and I have mentioned a little bit earlier about the limitations. I think I actually asked ChatGPT about what we should do and what we should not do in the in in the yeah in the classroom and how we could make better use of it in in the in the academic context. So it comes up with a lot of good ideas. First of all, I think we should, uh, as a teacher and also as a as the students, we should be in stay like informed about all these AI advancement. 
we need to teach and educate our students about how to use them in the classroom and how better uh, they can support our learning. And uh, it, it also comes up with a lot of good suggestions on how we could monitor the students using of these AI tools uh, and also how to prevent them from uh, cheating and or even plagiarism. Um, yeah, how to provide maybe guidelines, how to assess their works and how to maybe um, use these attack detective like tools to um, avoid plagiarism. Yeah, it, it's, it is a lot of, there are, are a lot of things going on. There are quite a lot of uh, suggestions that can be useful. However, I think teachers need to make decisions about your context. I think as language teacher, it's it's relatively easier because we make use of these chat box and uh, chat GPT AI tools to improve students' language learning. So the content uh, is more language based, text based. It doesn't include any maybe academic uh, integrity mm -hmm. like policies. Yeah, but for teachers who are working in the universities, can maybe need to work on more of the policies in the classroom. Yeah. Yeah. Um and I can see in the chat, people are asking you for the um, for the links to those uh, uh, those policies or anything you've got regarding those policies, Super. So if you can add to yeah. that, that'd be great. So one thing Super mentioned there as well is about um, keeping up to date. Uh, Mitsuyu and Guy and Blue, if you want to jump in at any point, please do. Uh, but keep. I think one of the things is as teachers, if we do keep up to date, we're more likely to be able to spot if you think about plagiarism of the tools that that maybe students are using to to plagiarize or the tools that are going to be effective for learners and i think by embracing ai we we can really make it useful rather than seeing it i think we've moved this conversation has moved towards um the, the don'ts of it the negative side of it but i think by by researching by keeping up to date and, and helping our learners navigate AI, then we're probably going to be in a better place. Well, what, are, what are your thoughts about that? Well, yeah, I, I go back definitely to the do's and let's go back to the classroom. Let's, let's go back to the basics, whether it's primary, secondary, university level, let, let's keep that human interaction. Um, we don't want to lose that. So let's just look at AI as a tool to research, that initial research stage which is fine because we've always had different ways, different tools, different ways to access content when researching, whether it be an encyclopedia, whether it be online on the internet, or nowadays just asking AI for a direct answer. That's not new. What we need to do as educators, again, to encourage that student talk time, that organic, authentic English in the classroom, is make sure when we're giving them the platform to go, okay, do your research, by any means necessary, find out what you need to find, given this context and theme of the lesson. And then hopefully the big do is then allowing your students that opportunity to share what they found in the classroom, to consider it, to debate it, to argue it, to dismiss it. And then hopefully that can generate a lot of more organic, authentic ideas amongst students, some disagreement, some opinion sharing. And then as a whole, the topic gets learned a lot more on that human level which we've all sort of kind of agreed that can be often omitted when just exclusively using AI. So that would be my takeaway of a do. Do use it, use it in the right way, teach your students to use it in the right way, implement it correctly, manage it efficiently, and then make sure from that stems some kind of organic use of conversation in the classroom, university level, primary yeah. level, secondary level, regardless. Yeah. Do you have any um, thoughts, Mitsuko? Well, go ahead. Right. Yes. Thanks, Blue. Um, uh, my question is that, um, well, I, as I said, I never really touched the chat GPT. I learned a lot of materials today. It was fantastic. But I, I just wonder how much time and energy I have to put to find out and, uh, you know, where to start. And um, so, sorry about that. But, you know, uh, probably the students would learn much faster and better. And I agree that we should, you know, have the students come back and share their ideas. But how much control the teachers should have? Do you have any thoughts about that? Yeah, that, that's a very good question, Mitsuyo, because there is no open answer. It's very much a blanket answer where I have teacher friends who have come to me and said, Blue, my student 
showed me something today which blew my mind. I couldn't believe what they did and how they did it. And it was the student educating the teacher about how they had approached a piece of work in the classroom and what they had delivered. Was it all of their work? No. Did the teacher know it wasn't all of their work? Yes. But did the teacher commend them on the way that they'd gone about trying to get it and found it and sourced it? Of course, the teacher was blown away by what this particular AI could do and generate. So my answer to you, Mitsuyu, is go away. I would personally, I would start with chat GPT. Sign up, get on it, just have a play around. Ask it the silliest of questions. Ask it something that you never thought you'd be able to get sort of a, a I don't know what's the word I'm looking for, a structured answer that actually makes you yourself think, damn, that's better than what I would have written myself. And that's what I found it can do, which honestly, it intimidates me. It scares me. But does it have value? Of course it does. But there all are those limitations we've spoken about. But my best advice to you or anyone out there who is unfamiliar or daunted by what we've talked about today is have a play around with it yourself. See how it works. See how you can manipulate it almost to your gains and advantages and also look at how students might look at using it as a go around to sort of cheat, copy, or make their lives a little easier. Yeah, I think I think that's very valid. I think whether we tell them they can or can't use it, I think they're going to use it. Yeah, so of if, if they can share the way they're using it to other students in the class, that's only got that's, that can only be beneficial. Yeah. Yes, and I think because. Uh, in the future, everyone is having access to AI tools, so that that's going to be inevitable. And uh, uh, the the good students know how to use it, and the, the 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 not that good students may only rely on that. So I think the key difference is how we use it critically. Because from my personal experience in the exploration of these AI tools, I find that the learning curve is is quite steep as well because I need to judge whether these content are valid, whether uh, they are generating something like correct and how I can better giving prompts and how I can, yeah, uh, choose the right materials they generated. So it's it's a very like a, a demanding process for thinking and learning as well. I do not, yeah, the, the attitude here is I do not like accept everything AI gave, gives me. I need to, yeah, critically thinking about the content. So I think we need to encourage our students to use AI in this way as well, because it is uh, the situation that AI is not like a, a perfect, they cannot do everything. So it's the person, the human beings who are using it can manipulate that and take the advantage of that and yeah, make our learning and uh, teaching better. You, you could also- uh, to, to Sorry, answer that. Ahead. Uh, you can also, if, if you're, um, if you have a great relationship with your learners, which hopefully you do, um, is to, when you're asking students to do work outside of the classroom, it is to um, allow them to use any, any tool that they want to, to, to get that information, to do that. But what they must do is also share with you the tools that they've used and how they've gone about doing it. So to show their, their find their work, if you like. Um, and then you, Mitsuyo, get them to do the research for you about the AI tools that students are using. So you kind of uh, allow them to do it for some um, aspects of their coursework. And at the same time, they do the, all your research and you get to, to know all these tools um, and find out what, what they're actually using. So, because I already imagine that they're much more advanced than we are when it comes to what's available out there, because um, they have much more of a, a reason to be, um, it's so much more helpful for them. All right. Yeah, are, are we done Dale? We've got a, two, a couple more minutes. Yeah, I've got a couple more minutes and then I'm gonna share with you something that I think is really cool. And then um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll wrap things up. I, I was just gonna add guys, don't, don't ignore the fundamentals. So again, we all know what the fundamentals are when we're in the classroom. We want them to be able to speak clearly, correctly, grammatically correct. We then lift that and hopefully they can do it in their writing as well. So that's a good point. When I receive a piece of work from a student and I think, oh, they've used the present perfect continuous correctly on that piece of work they've submitted online to me. 
what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go into the classroom and I'm going to test them and say, OK, give me a few more sentences right now using that same grammatical structure. Can you do it? And that could be a really good litmus test to see whether or not it was authentic work by them or whether or not there's this fundamentals still aren't there and they need to be practiced. So even using that sort of uh, work to your advantage to go, OK, you've, you've, you've handed this in as your work. Well, let's see if it was. Let, let's let's judge you with a few questions. So so don't forget and ignore the fundamentals when it comes down to it, because that can be lost when you're just asking and introducing AI as well. Yeah, good, good, Bill. Thanks so much for that. All right. So I just want to say a massive thank you to Guy and Mitsuyo. And um, because we're talking about AI and we me talk about chat GTP. Uh, while while you were uh, chatting, I asked ChatGTP to write me a poem, uh, and I'm going to show you that poem now, which it's come up with. So this is dedicated to Guy and Mitsuyo to say thank you so much for your participation today. It's been really great to have you, uh, and thanks for your uh, interest. So here's your poem. You're not going to read it to us now? Um, no, you can read it yourself, can't you? I have to say, I cannot write any poems like that. Yeah, it's much more better than, <laughs> yeah. than my... Hmm. Yeah, so thank you so much. It's just a bit of fun, but you could actually... Um, my, my prompt, I said, write a poem thanking Guy and Mitsuyo for their contrib contribution in our discussion on AI today. And this is what it came up with. So it's, it's pretty cool, I think. Superb. Yeah, so... So once again, thank you very, very much. And we we'll hope to see you again very soon um, for the thank ELT you. time, actually, coming up on Wednesday. So let me just uh, finish with today's uh, housekeeping. Please, please, please do our survey. It's very important to us that we get your feedback. So we're giving you the content that you need and that you require. Um, please, so please, please, yes, go to the survey. Let me just get the link and I'll put that into the chat as well. Okay, one second while I go to the right slide. Coming now. All right, so here's the link. I just got it on another screen. That's why I can't see it. There we go. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and our WeChat uh, if you want to know everything, anything about what's coming up in the future um, and about our products. You can get your certificate with the thank you email. Please keep an eye out for that. Um, this will also include the recording uh, and any other materials. Um, please check your spam folders if you haven't received it. It may not come in the, in the next day or two. You might have to wait a little bit. So please be patient. Don't forget the Change Makers site where we want you to post your work that your students have been doing in the class, which tells us all about uh, what they're doing with sustainable development goals and making the world a better place, a more uh, equitable place. It's a website that will really enhance students' global citizenship. It will uh, give them uh, ideas to share. Um, and also hopefully give them inspiration to bring about positive and lasting change. You can click on, sorry, you can scan the QR code or go to the changemakers.live, changemakersworld.live website to get more information about how you can contribute and share your students' work. We'll be back Tuesday. Mr. Hwok and myself will be discovering the transformative power of AI in ELT. So the conversation doesn't stop. We have the uh, an expert on AI, Mr. Hwok, who's going to uh, uh, really sit down and hopefully give us loads and loads of ideas and su suggestions when it comes to education and AI. And lastly, yes, I will leave this up there. Please, please, please help us with our surveys. We really appreciate your feedback. We value it very greatly. So please, uh, please do that.
Thank you once again, Blue, Super, Guy, Mitsuyo. Thank you so Thank much. You. Have a great Thanks, evening. Thanks, guys. You Thanks too. for joining. Have a nice Take evening. Care. Bye. Bye-bye.